Alright guys, this is Travis from How Farms Work. Um, I wanted to do a little bit more detailed video on this RTK from that Austin brought up from Sloan's uh, in Cuba City. Um, we didn't really get enough time to show us the straight tracking. Well, for where we were yesterday, it really wasn't doable. But I'm in a field here right now. I've been messing with it. As you can see, I've got my lines already set up across the field. They're at 42 foot spacings. This is where I'm gonna be driving next. And these darker blue lines, hoping you can see that. These darker blue lines are my current, my next paths as we go. See, I got the auto track already on. Um, the tracking mode is straight track. I had to drive across the field after setting in a, my A point. Then I had to drive across the field to where I wanted to set my B point. And once you do that, you got draw a line, which you see here, um, between those two points, and that is going to be your straight line. So when you do, go and do this, you better make certain that you start and stop and point to the field where you're certain you want to be doing a straight line. I'm going to give you an example of what I'm doing here. See, I've already got my line set up. That's where I'm going to be going next. I'm going to put it in gear, and I'm going to hit my auto track button. It's going to auto automatically steer the tractor. So uh, here we go. There. Showed me the auto track button on the display. I'm going to drop down the bar, turn it on. Okay, all that is good. As you can see, it's doing a coverage map of what I'm doing. The tractor is registering that the implement is in the ground and doing its job. See, to get it to know when to start drawing a coverage map, when you hit your SCV or your control lever, you have to push it all the way down to the detent. So when it clicks, and you'll hear it again when I uh, get to the end here. switched over to the next track. I'm gonna hit the auto track button. The tractor is, and uh, the tractor just uh, engaged the auto track. It automatically spun around into the next path I need to take. I'm gonna drop the applicator down, turn it on. Spin the tractor around. It's going to switch over to the next path, path 10. Then I'm going to hit the auto steer, auto steer button, and let the tractor do the job. And you got to say when it comes to this RTK guidance stuff, especially when you're doing application, it says it really helps to cut costs because you're putting all the product that you're applying down right where you want it and need it. I say, I don't know if I've mentioned it, but the, this bar that we're pulling is currently a 42 footer. Um, I think it's a 16 shank. It doesn't pull too bad in tilled ground like this is. This is chiseled corn stalks. Um, the no-till bean ground that I was pulling it through that hadn't been chiseled or ripped or anything, that made the tractor tug a little bit, but she still handled it fairly well, considering we're also on more hilly terrain. Like down, it's down at my place up in the front section. the 
auto guidance button. For those of you that are wondering, I'm shutting off the valves for the hose that goes to the applicator and the valve that goes into the tank. Once I get done doing this, there's a bleeder right here, if you can see it. Then I gotta bleed the gas out uh, from here to here so I can take off the uh, take off the hose. Alright, we're going to do this backwards then. We close the bleed valve all the way down. I'm going to open up the applicator side hose first, nice and slow. You can see the hose bounce there. I'm going to back this out all the way. We're good to go. For a while, I guess. All right, for those that don't know why I wore gloves and the uh, safety glasses, this is because oh, in Hydrus, this is very dangerous. Um, in a liquid form, it boils rapidly. Um, Andrew said it has a 400 to 1 uh, expansion rate. Problem is, like the gas, you always try to stand upwind from it because it binds to the moisture in the air or in the ground. And if you get that <laughs> directly on your skin, it's like getting a frostbite. It takes all, all the moisture out of your skin. So you can just about imagine what that does to your lungs. I mean, it doesn't take very much to get in a lot of trouble really quick with this stuff. So that's why I put the glasses on, that's why I got the gloves. Um, I was working on it yesterday and left with those gloves they are built heavy enough that, you know, you're not going to get hurt. But I had some of that liquid run down my fingers with the gloves on. And you can feel that right now through the gloves about how cold that stuff. Gotcha. So it's definitely not something I would like messing with, but um, it's farming. You deal with dangerous stuff all the time. You just gotta be as careful as you can. Alright, well enough of that. We're gonna go back and try to finish up this section of the farm. And see where we end up for the weather pulls of Wisconsin on us. Oh. Alright. Set the adaptive curves, you gotta turn the steer on. Granted, I'm not gonna need that until my second pass, but it's just nice to get it out of the way because if you're like me, you'll forget it. Put it in the gear I want. She said probably gonna be about fifth. Oh, drop her in the ground. Turn the bar on. Everybody's happy. Maybe not the tractor that time. Alright, I'm gonna spin around. You can see I made an outside pass. This is where I stopped. I'm gonna get lined up on the next track. And uh, I'll be able to engage the auto track. And the tractor will guide itself around the field all on its own. Uh, as soon as the white line comes up, that's when you can push the auto track button. Yeah, like that. It's not the one I want. 
centered zero and it stays as close as it can all right guys we're running down the nitrogen application for this fall We've got about 10 acres left in the tank and we're gonna wrap it up I've got my a B line set up I'm just going straight back and forth across the field you say it, it's not taking a very long time to run out these last few acres and then I can officially say that this is the last field work that we got for the year of 2016 and for the viewers that are asking about it and when we're gonna be doing calf videos and stuff um, a week from today is the planning for planning plan time for we'll start buying calves again we're gonna get that barn filled up and chances are by the time you see this video uh, the calves that are in the barn are, that I plan on buying in a week are probably gonna be weaned off but that's the plan for this winter we're gonna be raising calves all winter or I'm I will be raising calves all winter I think Ryan's got so much footage right now it's gonna take him till about February before he's caught up Oh, that sounds like a good problem to have, I guess. Some more videos he has to make for you guys. Uh, thank you for everybody is. Listening to the weather forecast, they're saying it's going to get pretty crummy really quick here. They're saying snow flurries and chances of snow and freezing rain here for the next couple days. Alright, we're out of my last video for the day. I just want to talk a little bit about this nitrogen applicator. Um, I don't know what Ryan has covered, so I just want to go over it real quick, just so we'll, you know, something that shows you guys what we're doing. So this is the Raven controller for this applicator bar. The screen's mad at me now. Um, what I got, it's this applicator. It's 42 feet wide. It's in 20 foot sections. Boom one and boom two. There is no boom three. Um, that's how you kind of control your rate. Make sure you're not overlapping too much. Assuming you can see that now. But yeah, boom one, boom two. Boom one is the left side as if you're sitting in the seat. And boom two is the right side. It's what I'm looking at right now. Um, I really didn't get into the whole buttons as far as actually having to run it it's just set to go it set for two different rates um, a rate for corn on beans and a rate for corn on corn uh, the rate two is set for corn on corn that's what I've been running on um, field area is where I've been running because it gives me an approximate idea about how long I have until I need to switch out tanks um, a tank usually runs anywhere between 25 to 35 depending on the rate as far as the total acres it covers um, the rate uh, will display how much is going through the machine when it is engaged, but that's the master switch. But it won't put any product down unless it's moving. That's what that little white globe hockey puck is is on that uh, well on that box there. I'm not. I think that's a distributor for the anhydrous. Um, but what you're seeing, if you can see these valves behind me those go to the two different boom sections on the applicator they let me know that they're pressurized that they're putting product down um, <laughs> I don't know how you, much you want to run this without those I've caught myself a couple times running with only half the bar on where I've had to go back and redo what I missed so those just for being little gauges they definitely do help um, I don't know Ryan's got a bunch of it actually running I'm not going to get into that but um, I'm winding down as far as how much I have left to do. 
I only have at the very most 40 acres to do yet and I don't know if I'll even get to it. You're saying the weather's going to start turning south here anytime after noon. And it's 12 o'clock. So if you like what you see, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Follow me on Snapchat, Facebook, and Instagram. You guys can, I don't. Just Facebook. Alright, see you next time.